So today we're gonna make uh, potato pancakes. Really, really simple, but one of my favorite things. Um, this is two pounds of peeled, washed, and dried white potatoes. And all we're gonna do is just use a regular box grater. If you have a food processor, you can definitely you know, use the grating attachment in your food processor. I try not to take the food processor out unless I really have to because there's a lot of parts of that that need to be cleaned. So we'll go ahead and grate up these potatoes and then we'll move to the next step. Okay, so we have all of our potatoes. Grate it. And don't let this brown scare you. Potatoes are gonna oxidize, which just means it's a chemical reaction that, they're, um, that they have to the air. They turn a little bit brown. It's not the end of the world. Um, you know, you can salt them right away. It'll slow that down, but it is what it is. It's a natural process. Um, I have a very large onion here. I'm actually only going to use half of this onion. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, peel it and then I'm also going to grate this onion very, very fine. You don't wanna chop it. You're not looking for bits and pieces of onion throughout the um, potato pancake. You're actually looking for the juice of the onion to flavor the potatoes throughout. Potatoes and onions go so well together. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and just grate this onion. You see what happens, it makes like a, almost like onion juice and, and, the, and the onions are like pulverized, so really, really small that you're not gonna get chunks and pieces, but you're gonna get all that delicious flavor. Okay, so all of the onion is grated. Um, something you notice about potatoes, as they sit, they start to uh, release a lot of water. And what I like to do right before I add the rest of my ingredients is just go ahead and get rid of that excess water. You don't need it. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't hurt them if you leave it, but I just like to strain it away. And this way they stay nice and tight. Um, I'm using my hands. You know, my, my mom used to always say that uh, our hands are the best utensils that God could give us. I use them. I wash my hands 15 times when I'm in the kitchen, so uh, don't worry that uh, they're not clean. But definitely, when you can, use your hands. Okay, so we've got this mixture here. So to this, I'm going to go ahead and just add one egg. I'm going to add one quarter of a cup of all-purpose flour. Just, you know, just enough to bind the ingredients. I'm not looking to make, uh, you know, a cake here. I'm just looking to bring these ingredients all together. And then I'm going to use a teaspoon of salt. Again, kosher sea salt. Those are my preferences. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of um, green onion, scallion. I like the color that they give. Um, if you don't have these on hand, that's fine. You absolutely do not need them. You certainly, if you want at this point, is you can put a little bit of fresh parsley. You can even use a little bit of dried parsley. I like the color contrast when I'm looking at the, uh, you know, the finished product, the white potato with a little speckle of green in there. This is, again, this is a preference thing. So you can put whatever fresh herb you like in there or no herb at all if you don't, you know, if you don't like herbs at all. But uh, definitely your choice. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix this until everything come together. I'm not going to over mix it. There's no need. I'm not, you know, there's not a hundred ingredients in here, but I'm just going to give it a quick mix. Excellent. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out a nonstick skillet. Uh, these work really good in nonstick. This is not something you'd use your cast iron pan for, or, or you could if you wanted to, but I, I don't recommend it. The potatoes will tend to stick and you'll have to use, um, you know, a metal spatula to get them off the bottom. So if you have a nonstick, definitely go ahead and use a nonstick pan. Okay, so we have our nonstick skillet. I put a little bit of canola oil down in the bottom. The skillet is nice and hot. And we're gonna go ahead and start cooking our potato pancakes. And you see even more water is coming out on the bottom. I, you know, I just keep them pushed away. I just want them to be nice and crisp. I don't want them to be soggy. Hear that nice sizzle. Potatoes are very funny. Um, if you don't expose them to really high temperatures when you're trying to get a nice sear on them and a nice crust, they'll tend to get soggy. And there's nothing worse than a soggy, greasy potato pancake. So, you know, you want to keep these, you know, fairly high and just like anything else, there's no need to keep turning them constantly. We're gonna brown them on one side. When we get, then they get nice and brown. If we think they're getting brown too quickly, we can always then, once they get the crisp on them, we can always turn the gas down a little bit. 
let them finish cooking and then turn them over. Just make sure you readjust your gas when you turn them over and uh, keep an eye on them. You know, a lot of people don't realize that when you're cooking on a stove, a pan has what's called uh, recovery time and that's the amount of time it takes for it to come back up to the temperature you want it after you go ahead and add your cold food. So right now I'm gonna actually turn this up a little bit because when I added the cold food, I actually dropped the temperature of the pan really quickly. So I wanna go ahead and keep that, uh, that nice sear on them. I want them to continue to get crispy. I'm gonna keep an eye on them because as I hear the activity increase or I start to smell them getting a little darker than I want, I'm gonna go ahead down and lower it. So, you know, don't be afraid. Once you set your temperature on your on your flame, you don't have to leave it there. You know, it's not that much of an exact science. You have to keep adjusting it again to allow for that recovery time. Okay, so these have been cooking for about, about three minutes. See, they're starting to get a little bit lighter on the outside. They're not as white as they were. Um, and we're going to just go ahead and flip them. Look at that. That's beautiful color. That's exactly what we're looking for. Um, perfect. And again, I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to turn the gas up because the surface that I just flipped over onto the hot side of the pan was cooler than the pan itself. So it's going to bring that temperature down. I turn the gas up to compensate. I listen for my crackling and my sizzling. And when I know that it's come up to temperature again, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. But I want to make sure that I maintain that nice golden crisp outside and I don't get these potatoes to soak in oil and make them soggy because that's not appetizing at all. Okay, so these cooked about, you know, three or four more minutes. Um, they're really, really perfect at this point in time. Uh, you see the color on the other side. Very nice. So we're going to go ahead and take them off and we're going to move them. And this just helps kind of remove any of the excess oil that's been left on them. Um, this is a trick my mom taught me when we were kids. Whenever we went to the supermarket, she would always ask for paper bags. Uh, two reasons. One, plastic isn't good for the environment. And uh, two, the paper can be reused in the kitchen anytime she was frying eggplant or, uh, you know, making potato pancakes. And then I just put a paper towel over it just because I don't know where this bag has been and I don't want my food touching it. So. Uh, I'll leave it here for a little bit and I'll go ahead and uh, let it just soak up any oil. At this point, they're nice and hot. Um, I do give them a little sprinkle of salt, very small sprinkle of salt. Anytime you take foods directly um, out from being fried with any kind of oil, hit it with a little bit of salt. The salt will just melt into that top layer, give you that little bite of flavor when you bite into it. Um, what I normally do is I'll make a whole tray of these, you know, 15, 20 of them at a time and um, hopefully my family doesn't eat them faster than I can cook them, but if they do manage to survive their first 10 minutes, um, I will start my convection oven. I'll put it on um, low, um, you know, maybe around 200 degrees, and then once these drained for a few minutes, I'll go ahead and transfer them into the convection oven, and this keeps them nice and hot, and it also keeps them nice and crispy, and then if I'm serving them, you know, to uh, a large amount of people, they're all still very hot when I go ahead and serve them. Okay, so these are all done. We had them in the convection oven staying hot. And now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put them in a dish to serve. What I really like about these more than anything is how versatile they are. Um, you can have them with breakfast, which we have very often. Um, you can go ahead and just, if you want, you know, put an egg on top, or if you want, you can have them at night with dinner and, um, we absolutely love them with a little bit of sour cream. So there's no wrong way to eat these. There's no right time of day to eat them. Go ahead and make them, enjoy them throughout the day. You make them for breakfast. They're not going to last till dinner. So, uh, don't count on any leftovers. And there you have it. Thanks for coming by and see us again because there's always something good cooking in Aunt Susie's kitchen.